Jeremy Schapp, ESPN. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Susie. How are you? You sound dejected. You sound. You need to get up and more excited to hear no, from me. No, I'm good. Me. I'm good. I was just. I've, I'm still thinking about the Sprinter van. It's been like four minutes. I've been picturing myself behind the wheel of a Sprinter, and um, you were on the Mercedes-Benz <laughs> van's read. phone line, by the way. That was. I'm sorry. What? You, you are on the Mercedes-Benz van's phone line. So. Um, no, I know. That's why I'm thinking about it. Right. And um, yeah, it was just. It really. It just. It just sucked me in and it's all I've been able to think about. I think that was Berman a second ago. I heard his voice, but I was still thinking about the van and now it's all so wheel drive. You did hear the schwa. <laughs> I got three kids. I mean, I need the room. I, I'm going to try it. I have two things to tell you about the Mercedes Benz yeah. vans uh, phone line and, and our sprinter van. I love doing uh-huh. it from here because last week I was at the beach with my kids because it's Southern one? California. And somebody had a Sprinter van. They made it into a surf shack. So I was in Malibu. There I was in Zuma Beach. And there was a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van turned into like a hangout, a Shangri-La, a surf shack. The guy had put his surfboard rack on the top. I see see what you mean. And they they lined the inside with beds. And they were just chilling out watching the surf man. You can do many things. Yeah, and think about what you could do because, you know, for your bucket list, you could make this into a barbecue shack. (laughs) That's right. That's right. There's probably some way to equip it with some smoking equipment, maybe a big green egg. I I don't want to talk brands. You know, some kind of Kamado style. You just did. You you just talked brands, Jeremy. Well, you know, I hope they're li- I hope they're listening. <laughs> I hope they- How are you? It's good to hear you. You only call me when you know you want me on the radio, and you well, know, it's yeah, I'm a little hurt. But yeah, that's Jeez. okay. That's okay. It's it's a transactional relationship. <laughs> I understand that, but that's. But what if I said you never call fine. me? What does that mean on the years. transactional relationship? I'm sorry. You never call me, so I mean, at least I call you when point. I want something. I actually don't believe that I've seen you in person. In like six years, Yikes. I think it's something like that. I remember it was, I believe, this is how I, I keep track of time. I think it was the day after Muhammad Ali died. Yeah, yeah. The last time that I saw you. And you guys, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but Jeremy basically came with Rich and me on our honeymoon, almost. <laughs> Actually, here's the truth. Here's the truth. Jeremy was the last guy in the room the night of our wedding, remember? That's true. And I then we went that. to that Spain, whatever. <laughs> and then we went to Spain yeah. uh, right after our honeymoon with you. So basically, I mean, it's kind of like that, 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 I, that's I was, a tight like, I ship. Was, I was almost. I. You guys aren't Mormon, are you? <laughs> wow. Well, I think I think um, you know the answer to that one. But whatever, <laughs> TJ. I'm drinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're having mimosas here, Jeremy. Before we t- get to your doc, and by the way, I'll be in the city in December, so I- I'd like to see you. Um, before we get to your doc, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that a drop, Jay Philly? I mean, promises, promises. You My may, phone is cold soon. from promises, you. Promises. You knew okay. you would it's, okay. keep it's all right. On. Yeah. Well, let's. <laughs> this is my Brian Gumble moment. Let's move on to a documentary that took the took. Um, the attention of America to ESPN the other day. The band is on the field. Can you just tell us a little bit about how much fun it must have been to do that documentary? Because the the guys, the names that are involved in it, some of the most joyous video of all times in sports. What was it like putting this together? Yeah, it's you know, well, as usual with these things, as you're well aware, Susie, um, uh, I didn't do much. You know, the producer, Simon Baumgart, Mike Shallow did all the real work. And I, I came in and did, I don't know, uh, a half dozen or so interviews. You know, but, you know, putting it together, um, you know, as a team, um, it was a lot of fun. I, 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 I tend to overstate these things, but I do consider it the greatest moment in the history of sports. And, <laughs> and if you bear with me, I'll explain why. I mean, it, you know, we've seen it so many times now, right? We're talking about the play that ended the Cal Stanford game uh, on November 20th, 1982, 40 years ago this Sunday. Five laterals. Uh, the touchdown scored as, you know, uh, the Stanford band was on the field. Kevin Moen, the Cal defensive back who scored, he's weaving through the band. 
They're trailing 20 to 19 with four seconds to play. Okay. So Cal has uh, just fallen behind 20 to 19 after Stanford kicks uh, a 35 yard field goal with eight seconds on the clock. But after it goes through the uprights, there's still four seconds on the clock. So Stanford's got a kick. Cal's got to receive and they keep it alive and they score. I mean, how many football games have you watched? How many football games have we all watched? Um, it just doesn't happen, right? I mean, it doesn't happen the way that that happened there. It, 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 take the band out of the equation, right? Uh, imagine that the Stanford band was never on the field at all, not to mention the dozens, scores of other people beyond the band who were on the field at the time that the touchdown uh, actually was scored, uh, you know, on the field of play. But just a game ending like that, a Division I college football game with bowl implications, and on the losing side, you've got one of the greatest players in the history of the sport, John Elway, was the Stanford quarterback. They've just seemingly fashioned this remarkable comeback for the ages, and now you have this five lateral play uh, that wins it in one of you know the great rivalries in college sports. Uh, it's it's just it's remarkable, uh, you know, what happened. And then there's the band element as well, everything else. And and this is 40 years ago. There are no cell phones. There are no replays in the moment. Nobody knew what was going on. If you're, if you're one of the people in the stadium that day and you just witnessed this, you really have no idea. Did that really just happen? And it took hours before people saw video of it. Um, and, and, you know, could kind of process what had happened. I, I really think, um, you know, there's there's something about this play that uh, transcends sports, and it is about hope, and it is about um, uh, it, it, it is about keeping faith, and and it's also about preparation because there were things that happened in the play that um, you know uh, um, only happened because of the way that. Cal approached that moment and approached practice all that season. Yeah, it's just so much fun to watch, and you have to think it could never happen again. I mean, I watched it again and again. We had Ron Rivera on the other day, so I watched a little bit in advance of having right. him on. And it just seems preposterous for all of us who spend our lives on the sideline. Like, how the hell did the band get on the field? <laughs> well, the band got on the field. I mean, you know, well, here's what happens, right? If if you know, they make the tackle. The band's out on the field already. Band's you know, all ready uh, to band, celebrate. Very, band's ready to celebrate. Very, they, they come down. Yeah, they come down to the field, you know, as the game is winding down. Um, and, uh, you know, they're ready to perform win or lose, although they certainly thought in that moment, not when they started walking down perhaps, but by the time they get down to the field, you know, naturally you think, you know, this is a winning performance. We're going to perform. They're all the way back at the end zone. There's not a lot of space at Cal Memorial Stadium uh, between uh, the, the lines and the stadium, uh, the, the stands, I should say. It's, it doesn't have a track or anything like that. So they're kind of crowded down at that end of the field of the stadium. And then a lot of people, as this play was unfolding, thought it was over. Like, they just... You know, they, there were it's kind of a chain reaction where somebody thought uh, the play was over. So people started coming onto the field. There were, you know, there were Stanford players on the field who should not have been. I don't know how many Stanford players were actually on the field during the play, but it's it's a lot more than eleven. Yeah, it's 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 a hot mess. It's so much fun to watch. It's on ESPN Plus, and I encourage all of you to watch it because it really is incredibly well done. As everything that you do is well done. Speaking of well done. How's that oh, for? Boy. That's a really good segue. Nice. Thank you. Um, that Sprinter van you were talking about, that smokehouse. Jeremy, how did yeah. you become such a uh, barbecue aficionado? For anybody who's really oh, bored well, right I'm, now, I'm flattered. You're welcome. Um, go to Jeremy Shap at Jeremy Shap on Instagram because we have a, a, an array uh, of your best barbecue moments that we have for you. And this is what we're showing: oh, really? is tenderloin on the. Ooh. On the egg, something or other. I mean, Jeremy, when did you become a barbecue guy? Well, you know, I, when I moved to the suburbs, right? Uh, you know, I wasn't a barbecue guy in the city. It would have been difficult. Um, but, in Midtown, uh, out the window, about it. It would, have, it would have been tough. 
probably would have been against code. But but when I moved to the suburbs, you know, in my 40s, uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of a rite of passage, right? You get a barbecue. The first thing that, you know, I bought uh, when, when I moved out of the city was a barbecue. And, and uh, you know, it's just uh, one of these – some people have – more healthy hobbies, you know, they might jog or I don't know, some go to the gym. I barbecue. Your dad wrote books you know, and you barbecue. Yeah, yeah. I find it therapeutic, and I, I, I'm not saying that I'm any good at it. I mean, I'll have to let other people judge. Um, but you know, I, I do take pride in it. You know, I like to you know feed people. I like I like people to enjoy their meals, and you know, I, I think I have. Uh, I, I, I think I have a good sense uh, of um, recipes that will work. And that's really the key. I mean, after you spend 30 or 40 hours, you know, watching YouTube videos, you need to be able to figure out which ones are going to work for you. And and I've, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of fish. I do a lot of meats. I haven't really done a lot of vegetables. I guess I should do that too, but it doesn't interest me as much. But I'm willing to learn. Is that like and the I, Al Michael? The Al Michael's next response. Time, next time you're in town. Yeah, the Al Michael's response. No vegetables. I thought it was. It's no green vegetables, technically, isn't it? He doesn't like any vegetables. I, thought, at all. I could be wrong. No. But I thought it was green vegetables. Maybe is it really no vegetables? Period. He really doesn't like any vegetables. It's green, which but is the, like the, 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 the Tubers can't count, right? Like like he eats like potato. That's like a starch. That's not a potato. Hold on. Chris Brockman's got a question potato about World Cup. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Wait, on. Is potato a vegetable? Potato's a, uh, a, it's a, legume. It's a starch. Potato's a vegetable. I thought it's a legume. Look it up. No, a potato is not a legume. It's uh, a tuber. Beans are legumes. It's a tuber. Uh, beans are legumes. Oh. Uh, I think technically peanuts are legumes, but they, no, not potatoes. They're root vegetables. Actual sports question uh, for you, Jeremy. <laughs> How big of a disaster is the World Cup in Qatar going to be? See, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. A disaster in what sense? I mean, I, you know, well, I just think in sense I that they're they're, they're not letting people take pictures. They're they've banned the alcohol sales. It just seems like yeah, it's a you know, government I, run I organ, know, you, you know, know, the the tournament. I saw the beer thing uh, this morning. Uh, trying to figure that out. Um, you know, the, there's the way um, the way the tournament is run. I, I mean, you know, they've been preparing for this for a very long time, 12 years. I mean, the fact that this happens on the eve of the tournament with the beer thing, you know, that's that's weird, right? Like you would very think the decision strange. would have been made one way or the other by now after 12 years. I don't know exactly how that happened. Um, you know, in, in terms of the way that they, you know, if you're talking about the infrastructure, the logistics, I would expect it to end up being well run. In terms of the way that um, people are allowed to communicate, that um, the press is allowed to express itself, uh, yeah, those are all open questions. And, and, you know, what we've seen the last few days is troubling. Yeah, I, this is going to be, it starts on Sunday. It's going to be a head scratcher to see what comes down. But you have to wonder if FIFA, uh, who's running the show here? You mean FIFA or, or the, the committee, the mm -hmm, host, mm -hmm. host country? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, FIFA is soccer's global governing body. And even when they are award the rights, you know, it, it's not like they're taking over the country, right? You know, they, they are guests of Qatar. And, um, and, and as such, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're not the ones who make the final decisions. Nope. They're not, but I'm deciding to sit at your table, Jeremy. I'm going to make the sojourn out to the Connecticut suburbs to see you. You'll never unless you're in the suburbs. No, I won't. I won't. You're right. But you I'll see you in the city. Won't. Okay. I'll see you in the city. Thanks for calling in. And, Thank you know, you. you can always call me. My phone does ring from time to time. I, I think I remember the number, but I probably shouldn't say it on the air. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, thanks so much for calling in. Thanks, Susie. Goodbye, Chapois. Jeremy. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.